Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Alexander Bazzotti. I'm an environmental scientist, and I'm here to present the Fusion News update for October 4th, 2023. I have four stories for you this week. One, a futuristic plan to make steel with nuclear fusion. Two, the ZAP Energy approach to commercial fusion. Three, Germany holds fusion hearing after funding and strategy announcements. And four, superconducting magnets as catalyst. Additionally, I have a few bonus stories to share if you stick around until the end. One, a futuristic plan to make steel with nuclear fusion. Fusion Power startup and FIA member Helion Energy located in Everett, Washington in Nucor, a leading steel producer with operating facilities in the United States, Canada, and Mexico have joined forces to develop a 500 megawatt electric fusion power plant. The collaboration involved a large investment of $35 million from Nucor into Helion to help in the delivery of this fusion power plant, which will be located at one of the Nucor North American steel manufacturing sites, which is among the largest electricity consumers within each state they are located. This collaborative effort aims to accelerate the future of clean energy in the industrial manufacturing sector. Helion Energy, renowned for its innovation in fusion technology, has already achieved impressive milestones including the creation of six working fusion prototypes and becoming the world's first private fusion company to achieve 100 million degree plasma temperatures. Currently, the company is in process of constructing its seventh prototype, Polaris, which is expected to demonstrate electricity production from fusion in 2024. Nucor, which calls itself one of the world's cleanest steel manufacturers, has shown their commitment to reducing its carbon footprint. And this fusion energy agreement would be a massive step towards their goal of achieving clean energy for steelmaking. The fusion power plant will provide Nucor's steelmaking facility with zero carbon electricity. And it's worth noting that this collaboration is the first of its kind at such a scale and is set to pave the way for decarbonization within industrial manufacturing. Helion CEO David Kirtley expressed his enthusiasm for the partnership, stating, we are proud to have investment from Nucor and to have the opportunity to work together on this project. Their commitment providing their customers with the lowest embodied carbon steel and steel products available makes them a great fit for deploying 500 megawatts of fusion power. The collaboration between Helion Energy and Nucor signifies a pivotal moment in the fusion industry and the broader effort to transition to clean energy and industrial manufacturing and would provide a blueprint for fusion companies to sign similar deals with power customers in the future. Two, the ZAP Energy approach to commercial fusion. FIA member ZAP Energy spun out of the University of Washington stands out with its pioneering approach centered on the z pinch concept. Unlike many fusion technologies that require external confinement and heating methods, ZAP's z pinch relies on plasma self-organization offering a more elegant and cost-effective path to commercial fusion energy. This academic paper, published in a special edition exploring private fusion approaches, explores ZAP Energy's strategy, highlighting the simplicity, low capital cost, and efficiency of their approach. ZAP Energy's key innovation lies in utilizing plasma flow to stabilize the Z-pinch. This approach enables the creation of high-performance plasmas with fusion capabilities comparable to larger and more complex fusion devices. A fundamental advantage of ZAP's approach is its engineering simplicity and the reduced capital costs. Unlike other fusion methods that demand complex external systems, ZAP's Z-Pinch eliminates the need for high field magnets, external magnetic fields, and capital intensive heating technologies. These simplifications lead to cost savings, operational efficiency, rapid development, and a smaller power plant footprint. The device occupies a unique position offering a middle ground between magnetic and inertial confinement fusion. Their moderate triple product parameters, which are plasma density, temperature, and energy confinement time, make them accessible and less reliant on extreme conditions, reducing technological challenges. 3. Germany holds fusion hearing after funding and strategy announcements. Germany is actively pursuing fusion as a future energy source. In a recent hearing before the Bundestag's research committee, eight scientific experts, including FIA member companies, Focused Energy and Proxima Fusion, provided insights into the nation's fusion ambitions. Key insights from the hearing indicate that private companies rather than research institutes are expected to lead in developing the first fusion power plant. This approach is part of Germany's broader strategy to advance fusion commercialization which promises spillover benefits in areas like high temperature superconductors and laser technology. 
To support this endeavor, the German government is urged to create legal frameworks, allocate capital for public investments, and foster public-private partnerships while encouraging local fusion startups to remain in Germany. Earlier in September, Federal Research Minister Bettina Stark-Watzinger announced that the Federal Research Ministry will invest a total of over 1 billion euros in fusion research over the next five years, and they have initiated a funding program worth 370 million euros for laser-induced fusion, highlighting Germany's commitment to advancing fusion research. Furthermore, the country has attained a leading position in magnetic field-based fusion through the Stellarator, experimental reactor in Greifswald, solidifying its presence on the global fusion research stage. Despite Germany's aspirations, the journey to fusion energy, of course, has its challenges. Experts estimate that Germany needs to invest 20 billion euros over the next two decades to build research capacities and foster an innovation ecosystem, bridging the gap between scientific research and business ventures. Additionally, the fusion quest raises questions about how it aligns with Germany's efforts to expand on other clean energies, like solar and wind, to achieve the country's immediate climate goals. Four. Superconducting Magnets as a Catalyst The 28th International Conference on Magnet Technology, MT28, brought together nearly 1,000 experts in the field of magnet technology. This event, hosted jointly by the ITER organization and the French Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission, provided a platform for scientists and engineers to delve into the latest advancements in magnet technology across diverse sectors, including medicine, high-energy physics, transportation, aviation, decarbonization projects, and of course, fusion energy. One of the central themes of MT28 was the pivotal role of magnets in the pursuit of fusion energy. The conference opened with a comprehensive update on the ITER project, emphasizing its significance as a stepping stone towards achieving commercial fusion energy. Participants engaged in discussions about alternative approaches to making fusion energy commercially viable, focusing on crucial factors like the cost per kilowatt hour, which is expected to drive the deployment of fusion as a clean and sustainable energy source. Furthermore, a bustling industrial exhibition showcased 43 companies from around the world unveiling applications of superconductivity and exploring emerging superconductor concepts. High temperature superconductors like rare earth barium copper oxide garnered significant attention with discussions highlighting their potential contributions, possibly catalyzed by fusion energy research. Adding to the conference's appeal was of course its location, just 30 kilometers south of the ITER construction site. This proximity allowed over 500 attendees to witness firsthand the impressive magnets and construction progress associated with the ITER fusion project. The MT conference series, which began in 1965, has evolved over time, reflecting the growing importance of magnet technologies in a wide range of fields, including fusion energy. As the global pursuit of fusion energy continues, conferences like MT28 play a pivotal role in fostering collaboration and knowledge exchange among experts working toward a sustainable and clean energy future. And now I have three bonus stories for you. All In Summit, Nuclear Fusion and the Potential for Energy Abundance. During the recent All In Summit hosted by Chamath Palyamtia, Jason Calacanis, David Sachs and David Freeberg, who are hosts of the All In Podcast, where they cover all things economic, tech, political, social, and poker. They welcome two FIA member company CEOs, Bob Mumgard of Commonwealth Fusion Systems and David Curley of Helion Energy to give presentations and engage in a discussion of the commercialization of fusion energy, technical challenges for each of their systems, and the price per kilowatt hour at scale, and much more. I highly recommend checking that out. U.S. aims to create nuclear fusion facility within 10 years, Energy Chief says. As discussed many times over the last year and a half on this channel, the Biden administration is planning to establish a commercial fusion facility in the next decade as part of its transition to clean energy. This article echoes the U.S. bold decadal vision originally unveiled in March of 2022. And three, fusion is almost here. This is no time for Congress to shortchange research funding. And with that, that is all for the fusion news this week, and I truly hope you enjoy. If you did, please let me know by liking this video, leaving a comment down below, and if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Have a great rest of your week.